What's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today I want to show you one of my favorite little PCs for emulation. This is a Lenovo M93P. This is actually the second one I was able to pick up and it was much cheaper than the first one I bought about two years ago. And speaking of that first one, it has been on non-stop as my main work PC for almost two years now. I absolutely love these little machines. The first one I picked up, I paid $100 for. I found it on Craigslist, and recently I was in a little resale store and found this one for $50, so I had to pick it up. And for that price, it did have the power adapter, but it doesn't have a hard drive and only 2 gigabytes of RAM. The specs on these little machines are pretty good. This thing has an i5-4570T. Now that's a dual core processor at 2.9 gigahertz with a boost up to 3.9. Like I said, it's only got two gigs of RAM in it, but I will upgrade it here in this video. And we're also gonna add new thermal paste and clean the heat sink. Then I'm gonna show you how some of my favorite emulators perform on this little machine. I'm gonna be running Windows 10, but you could install Windows 7, or if you really wanted to, you could go with Linux on a machine like this. I just prefer using Windows 10 because I can use my favorite front end, LaunchBox and BigBox. If you're interested in picking one of these up, I recommend checking your local Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp, and all of those little resale apps that you can get on your phone. Somebody may have one of these for sale for around $50 to $100, but if you're hard up, you can get one on eBay for around 104 bucks. When you're looking at these Lenovo M93Ps, make sure it has the fourth generation i5. It has much better integrated graphics than the third generation. So you will find these with the third generation i5, but I would stay away from them unless you can get it for a really, really good deal. And if you don't mind upping the form factor a little bit, you can get the Lenovo M93P SFF for around 100 bucks. Now this thing is gonna perform better because it has a real quad core CPU, a higher boost clock, and you can add a low profile GPU. If you're going with the super small form factor one like I have in this video, you cannot add a dedicated GPU. You're gonna be stuck with those integrated Intel graphics. But for emulation, it does a really good job. I will leave a few eBay and Amazon links in the description if you're interested in checking these things out. So the first thing I wanted to do was add some more RAM. Unfortunately, all I had were two 8 gigabyte sticks. Remember, this uses DDR3 1600 megahertz. These are different timings, but they're the same speed. It'll work in a little unit like this just fine. 16 gigabytes is going to be overkill for emulation in a machine like this. And if I had it laying around, I would have thrown two 4 gig sticks in here, giving it a total of eight. You could get by with 4 gigs, but if you're running Windows 10, I recommend using 8. If you're thinking about running Linux on a machine like this, 4 gigs will get you by just fine. I just wanted to refresh this unit, so I'm going to clean all of the dust out of the fan. I just use a vacuum on reverse, it works fine, or if you want to use canned air, you could. I'm also going to remove the heatsink and place some new thermal paste on here because I don't know how long this has been in here. The thermal paste on here is pretty old, and as you can see where these heatsink fins are, it's almost completely closed with dust, so I want to get all of this out of here. I'm just going to wipe down the CPU with a little microfiber rag. You can use some isopropyl alcohol also. I'm going to grab the heatsink and clean this thermal paste off also. And as for cleaning the dust out, I have a little shop vac that'll go in reverse so I don't have to waste any canned air. Alright, so I've cleaned the fan up. I've also cleaned the fins on the heatsink here. Everything should be ready to install. I just need to grab some thermal paste. I use Noctua NTH2. If you can't get a hold of this NTH2 for some reason, Thermal Grizzly will work just as well. Everybody applies thermal paste differently. I just use a little tiny pea-sized dollop right in the middle. It's going to be fine for this chip. Never had any troubles in the past. I'm just going to place my heat sink and fan back on. Then I'll install the RAM and hard drive. I'm actually going to be using an SSD for this unit. Unfortunately, when I bought this PC, it didn't have a hard drive bracket pre-installed, so I'm going to be using a little piece of plastic here that was wrapped in carbon fiber. This was actually for a Raspberry Pi case, just so this SSD doesn't short anything out because it is aluminum. I do have a hard drive bracket on the way, it's just not going to be here for a few days. So that's it. I've added new thermal paste, an SSD, and more RAM. It's time to test this thing out. All right, so here we are with that Lenovo M93P. We have that i5-4570T. This is a dual-core CPU, four threads, 2.9 gigahertz, with a turbo boost up to 3.2. If you're going with the SFF model, it actually has the i5-4570, non-T, so it's a real quad-core. 
It has a higher boost clock up to 3.6 instead of 3.2. We got that 16 gigabytes of DDR3. It's at 1600 megahertz. And like I said, make sure you fill both slots. It's going to help out that GPU. And again, 8 gigabytes will be fine if you're running Windows 10. I only had 16 laying around. Finally, we have that built-in Intel HD 4600 GPU. This GPU is not meant for gaming, but it will run older games pretty well. If you want to run some Left 4 Dead 2, Half-Life 2, CSGO, there's tons of games that'll work on here at full speed. But I'm personally not worried about PC gaming on here. I want to focus on emulation. So like I said at the beginning, I'm running Windows 10 because my favorite front end is LaunchBox or BigBox. I'm going to go ahead and start up BigBox now. I'll leave a link for this in the description. This is the paid version of Big Box. We get this beautiful interface here. You can change out the themes. They have monthly updates. It's just the all around great front end, sort of like Hyperspin. And if you want to use Hyperspin, that's totally up to you. I just wanted to show you guys that it does perform pretty well on this little chip. Now, if you want to do MAME stuff on this little machine, it's going to work fine. But in this video, I'm going to be testing out some Dreamcast, PSP, GameCube, PlayStation 1, 3DS, and even some Naomi games. I'm just going to go ahead and get right into it. First up, we're going to test out some Dreamcast. I will have the name of the emulator, the name of the system, and the game on screen at all times so you know what's going on. I'll also have the FPS listed up in the top left hand corner along with the CPU, GPU usage, and CPU speed. This is the ReDream emulator. We are at 1080p. I could go a bit higher with it, but I think 1080p looks great for Dreamcast. It definitely looks a lot better than the original console, and it plays great. We're at a constant 60 with Dreamcast. This thing's not going to have any trouble with this emulator. Just going to have about 20 or 30 seconds of a couple more games for Dreamcast, then we'll move over to another emulator. Emulating your favorite PlayStation Portable games with PPSSPP is going to be no trouble for this chip whatsoever. Even God of War Chains of Olympus is going to run at full speed. Kill Zone's a little harder to run. We're at 2x resolution and we're running at a constant 60. This is another emulator I always get asked about. This is Citra, the 3DS emulator. While it's not going to run every game at full speed, there are some that are going to work fine. Like the older remastered Zelda games and Yoshi's Woolly World, there are a few others like Dragon Ball Z, but if you try to get into like the Mario Kart 7, Kirby, you're going to have a couple issues here and there. This just needs a little more CPU power to run, and it might work a lot better on the 4570 non-T because we have that boost up to 3.6 instead of 3.2. Next up we have some GameCube emulation using the Dolphin emulator and this is Time Splitters 2. Dolphin runs great on these little chips. It's pretty amazing to see how well it works.
But if we swap over to some PS2 emulation using PC SX2 1.5, these are the development builds, it's not so great. This is Tekken 5, which has been an easier one to emulate for me on lower end hardware. We're still not at full speed. There are a few tweaks that we can do in the emulator to get a little better performance, but I'm already running this at the aggressive setting, and if we go up to very aggressive, we're just gonna get glitches all over the place. Shadows are gonna look square, gameplay's gonna be a little slower, even though it says it's at full speed. There's lots of issues when you start going up with it. And I'll show you that right now. We're gonna go from aggressive to very aggressive. Start getting some really square shadows and some weird slowdowns. Even though my afterburner is reading that we're running at 60 FPS, you'll see the slowdown in just a second. It's really, really noticeable, but it's still registering as 60. Now this actually might be fine for some people, but for me I really can't stand those major slowdowns. When I drop into this tunnel, you'll see what I'm talking about. Hold triangle and select an icon with the left analog stick. And finally, a little Naomi, a Thomas Wave emulation using RetroArch and the Raycast core. It's going to work great on this machine. So that's pretty much it for this video guys, I really appreciate you watching. The Lenovo M93P with the i5-4570T in it is well worth $100. This little PC will run pretty much any x86 compatible operating system that you can throw at it. I've tested Android, Linux, Windows 7, Windows 10. It's an all around awesome little machine. It performs better than any ARM-based single board computer that I've tested, and in some cases with these new single board computers coming out, you can pick these up for a lot cheaper. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'm also going to leave some eBay and Amazon links in the description, but like always, thanks for watching.